Good afternoon, BFA, and those from NCTC that are joining us. So we are tremendously honored and fortunate that Senator Sanders called about 48 hours ago and said he had such a great time speaking to many of you just before Veterans Day um, assembly that he said he'd love to come back and just hear from you. And we said, sure, come on in and do a Q&A. So in his really busy day, he said that St. Albans is a place that he wanted to come and hear from the students. And it is really a free flowing conversation that he's interested in. From my end, without any talk of politics, um, I do believe Senator Sanders is the most consistent politician that we have. So he's the clearest one um, of where things stand. He's also probably the most student-centered that person that we have in Congress. So I'm thrilled to have him here because he's sincerely interested in your voice and what he can do to help Vermont students and life in Vermont. So without further ado for me, again, very thrilled. Let's give Senator Sanders a big round of applause. Thank you, BFA. Um, you guys are the future of the state of Vermont. Your generation is the future of America. And it's important that your voices be heard. And it's important that you know what's going on in Washington. So let me just take a very few minutes uh, to tell you some of the things that we're working on, and then I'm going to stop. And uh, I'd like to hear any questions you may have or any opinions you may have. You are citizens of Vermont, citizens of America, and although many of you are not 18 and you don't vote, your voices are important, all right? And I don't want anyone to be shy. Uh, if you got something on your mind, uh, let me hear it. Um, well, let me start off. I'm going to start off with a question for you. Uh, and I want you to think hard about it. Don't give me the answer that you, you know, may have seen on TV last night. In your judgment, what are the most important issues facing Vermont and America? Think hard about it. Okay, I see a hand up there. Do I see a hand? Stand up, be loud. Is everybody here? Your name is? Cody? Good. Inflation is a very big issue. Global warming, very important. Racism, very important issue. High interest rates, mortgage rates are going up. Yeah, stand up. Economic inequalities, okay. Yep. Housing, major issue in Vermont and America. Conspiracy theory, combating conspiracy theories. Okay, yep. That's a big issue, that's part of disinformation. Yep. Reproductive rights, big issue. Yep. Gender discrimination, big issue. Way in the end there. Substance abuse, good, thank you. Okay, all right. Great job. You guys have touched on many of the important issues that we are dealing with uh, every day. All right, let me start off talking about some of what we are trying to do, what problems remain. I heard the word uh, income inequality, inequality in America. Uh, who wants to elaborate on that? Is America a country which has significant economic inequality? Yes or no? Uh, who wants to know something about that? Raise your hand. Yep, stand up, be loud. Um, in St. Albans, there's a very big difference in housing. You go down to the lake and there's houses with quite a lot of money. And then you come right into St. Albans and there's people who are living five families to one house. And it's just such a big difference in such a small... Um, Where were the mics? Uh, <laughs> Okay. All right, now I'm going to ask you, as your principal, I'm going to indicate my, my views are a little bit different than a lot of people in Congress. I look at the world a little bit different. 
when we talk about inequality, it's not just St. Albans, it is America. Who wants to say a word, and I'm gonna say a few words on that myself, say a word about inequality in America. Anyone have any thoughts on that? Yeah, stand up. All right, if you have enough money, you can get away with anything. Is that true? All right. What else about, all right, what else about inequality? All right, now I'm gonna ask you a question. What does it mean to be a member of the working class. What does working class mean? Who has thoughts on that? Yep, stand up. Here, give, give them the mic. So like, oh, <laughs> it's like working class could be like anything from like a construction worker to like working in a sawmill or maybe a or something. Do you think most Vermonters and, and Americans are members of the working class? Um, I, I don't really know. Okay, good. <laughs> Who else? What does it mean to be in the working class of America? Yep, I see a hand, yellow hat right there. Yep. Uh, you work for your money, and you actually have to work to get money in the country instead of like having it given to you by your parents or Good. Very good point. Okay. All right, let me talk about inequality for a moment. In America today, we have more income and wealth inequality than in any time in the history of the United States of America. Now, you don't see that too much discussed on television or in the newspapers. Why might that be? Was any thoughts about that? Yeah, stand up, be loud. All right. Well, why is this not an issue? If I tell you what is true, that we have more income and wealth inequality, is that an important issue? You think it's important? In America today, three people, Mr. Uh, Mr. Musk. Mr. Bezos and um, third, second. No, Gates, Bill Gates, own more wealth than the bottom half of America. What do you think about that? So 160 million people is half of America. Three people own more wealth than the bottom half. It's like good, bad, doesn't matter. Why is it that? Yep, stand up. Good. I agree with you. Now, I want you to follow me now. This is tough stuff. If I were to say to you that money equals power, political power, what does that mean? So you might say, okay, some guy has a lot of money, does he put that money into his you know, closet, does he put it under his mattress? What do people who have billions of dollars do with their money? Yeah, stand up. Yeah. I honestly do put my money underneath my mattress. <laughs> You do, but you probably don't have billions that you're putting on the mattress. I got like 300. All right. All right, what do people who have billions do? Yes, stand up. Good. All right. All right, well that's, but how does that relate to politics? What do, if somebody has billions of dollars, what can they do politically with that money? Who was that? Yeah, young man there. With that kind of money, they can do almost anything they want. Well, give me an example of what they can do. They could help shorten the disparity and inequalities. They can help. No, I'm asking what they can do politically. Politically? Yeah. Okay. 
Let's move it along. Yup. Right there. Stand up. Uh, uh, yup. Right there. Yes. Yup. Okay. All right. Way in the back there. Stand up. I think those people with more money could just control everybody. Tell them, like, hey, vote for this person. Or All right. Let me give you an example of what money does. All right. What does campaign finance law mean? Anyone know what do I mean? If I were to say campaign finance law, what does that mean? Give me some new hands here, guys. Campaign finance. Yeah. Stand up. Be loud. Good. All right. It means if you wanted to run against me and I had a hundred times more money than you had for a campaign, you think you're going to beat me? No, you're not going to beat me. I was recently in Los Angeles. Any of you guys ever go to Los Angeles? Big city. And I was there to support a candidate who was a friend of mine, a woman named Karen Bass. She was running against a multi-millionaire who spent over a hundred million dollars to try to become mayor of Los Angeles. Hundred million dollars. Good news is he lost and Karen won. But very often people who have money can spend as much as they want on elections. There are billionaires. There's a guy who's going to be a senator from Ohio. And some multi-billionaire said, good, we're going to give you $15 million to become a senator from Ohio. What is the problem with billionaires putting millions of dollars into a candidate's campaign? Yeah. Here, take your mask off for this one. Yeah, that's you, right, right, right here. Yeah. We can't hear you with the mask, so take it off. So it kind of makes it like if you put like a million dollars into like one um, like no person to vote with, it will kind of just make it unfair for the other person. Right. Because, you know, All right. What does the billionaire want? Why would somebody? If you're running for the United States Senate, some billionaire came up to you and said, "I'm prepared to spend fifteen million dollars on your campaign." What does that person want? Is he just being a nice guy? Yeah. Stand up. Influence and politics. Exactly. All right. If I give you fifteen million dollars to become something, you think you're going to be listening to my needs on? I think you will. All right. And that's the problem. So, one of the very serious problems, and one of the reasons why Congress does not respond effectively to the needs of working people is many of the people who get elected get huge amounts of money from billionaires and millionaires, pay attention to those guys, and forget about working families back home. Okay? Very important issue that impacts all kinds of other issues. All right. Let me ask you a question. I want you to think hard on this. How far are we from the Canadian border here? 20 miles? Okay. In terms of health care, what, does, what do they do 20 miles north of here that we don't do? Anybody want to answer that one? Stand up. Stand up. Free health care. Well, nothing is free, but it is publicly funded health care. And who has friends or relatives in Canada? Or visiting Canada? Okay. Who wants to talk a little bit about what they do in Canada in terms of health care? If you work, yeah, stand up, be loud. Okay, okay. If you're, if you get really sick in Canada and you need a major operation, and you're in the hospital for two months, how much does it cost when you get out? Anyone know? Costs nothing. You don't have to take your wallet out. How do they have that? Is that a good, first of all, I want you to think about it. Is it a good idea that everybody has health care, what we call universal health care? Is that a good idea? 
Why is it a good idea? Let me get some more hands here, guys. Yep. Not everybody can afford health care, so for someone who's sick and can't afford it, that's not fair. It's not fair. What's your name? Genevieve says it's not fair, and somebody will say, yeah, it's not fair, but so what? Not my problem. You can't afford health care, why should I worry about it? What's the answer to that? Anyone have any thoughts on that? Now, this is a major debate. When you talk about, I know, when we talk about politics, there's a very strong philosophical divide. It comes down to issues like this. Genevieve says that it's a good idea that everybody should have health care as a right. Is that right? All right, how many people agree with Genevieve? How many people disagree? Okay, I don't see too many. I see a few hands. Okay. What you should know is that in every other major country, not just Canada, but throughout Europe, health care is a right, and it is either free or very, very inexpensive. Why do you think in the United States, if you end up in the hospital, you can come out literally with a bill for hundreds of thousands of dollars? or if you have no insurance at all, you may not get to a doctor or get to the hospital when you need to, and some 60,000 Americans die every year because they don't get to a doctor on time. Why do we have this system, as opposed to the Canadian system, or systems that exist in the United Kingdom or elsewhere? Okay, uh, purple sweatshirt, yeah. I would say mainly capitalism and bigotry. What you have is a, what is the motivating factor, or stay there, stay with the mic. What's the motivating factor of our healthcare system? Capitalism and bigotry. No, but no, you gotta be more specific than that. Who benefits from the current system? The, like 1% white system. No, which industry benefits? The, what? Healthcare? Yeah, healthcare what? Healthcare insurance companies. All right. So, in a given year, healthcare companies, United Healthcare, you see their ads, Blue Cross Blue Shield in some cases, other major insurance companies make billions of dollars a year on healthcare. And no other country allows insurance companies to play the role in healthcare that we do. The reason we have this system, in my view, others will disagree with me, is because of the power of the industry over Congress in preventing us from moving toward another type of system. They make a lot of money, they have a lot of power, they make a lot of campaign contributions, they have a lot of lobbyists. All right, I want to get back to you. All right, what about climate change? Is that an important issue? Why is it an important issue? Raise your hand, tell us why. Let me get some new hands here. Okay, right here, Lex. Yeah, right. Okay, all right, we, I, I'm gonna move around quickly because we don't have a lot of time and there's a lot of issues to go over. More on climate change. Why is it an important issue? Young lady right here. Um, so it's important because as climate change continues, it's causing like more natural disasters and big things like that to happen, which is causing people to, for their homes to get wrecked and other buildings, which is, right. you know, Okay. Climate change is causing more drought, major, major water crises in the western part of this country all over the world, causing more flooding, causing more extreme weather disturbances, torrential rainfall, 
the likes of which people have never seen, causing the acidification of the ocean. It'll have a big impact on fish life and our ability to fish, etc. What should the government do? Uh, let me get back. A simpler question. What is the cause of climate change? Who knows that? Yeah. Yes, stand up. Yes. Or just can be loud. Well, half right. What you're talking about is the emission, fossil fuel being what? what when you talk about fossil fuel, what are you talking about? Coal. Okay, very good. And that's caused greenhouse gas emissions warming up the planet. All right, what should government, what is the opposition historically? People have known about climate change. Scientists have been talking about climate change for decades, going back into the 1970s, so 50 years. Why has there been an inability on the part of government to address it? Yes, right here. Stand up. Say that again. People with money are profiting. What people? Uh, millionaires and. Oh, what industry? That's the fossil fuel industry. All right, so two examples here. We have a healthcare system that is the most expensive in the world, and yet 87 million people have no health insurance. The insurance company makes huge profits. In terms of climate change, for years, for decades, the fossil fuel industry has known what their product will do but they have fought against change. Just actually a few months ago, Congress took a modest step forward in dealing with climate change. If you were president, what would you do in terms of climate change? What are the changes that we need? Let me get some more here. Oh, yes, stand up, be loud. Okay, but what kind of, that's a tax. What are the changes that we need? How would the world look differently if we move forward on climate, yes, stand up. No, 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 jump right here, come on. All right, what does that mean, renewable energy? Who knows what renewable energy is? Yeah, stand up. Well, give me examples of renewable energy. What are those energy sources? Solar and wind, hydro, okay. What we did is we put $350 billion into those types of energies, energy efficiency. What about transportation, the cars we drive? What's gonna happen over the next couple of decades? What kind of cars are you gonna be driving in 20 years? You're gonna be driving probably electric cars, yeah. All right, who has questions for me on any subject? Oh, let me get some, yeah. Well, first of all, uh, in terms of climate, the question is what do I think? What, what steps forward is that? What makes climate change particularly difficult is if the American government, if our government, did all the right things tomorrow, would that be enough for climate change? Why not? What makes climate change that much more difficult? Yes, stand up. Because we're already too far gone. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's been done as far as climate change is concerned that can't really be reversed. All right, that's the point. But why is solving the problem not just an American issue? If Congress did the right thing tomorrow, why is it not enough? Yes, stand up, back there. Yep. Exactly, it's a global issue. It's a global issue can't be done by one country alone. In fact, the major emitter, carbon emitter in the world, is not the United States, it is China. So there is no way we can go forward and solve climate change unless countries all over the world work together. G20 
China, Russia, India, Brazil, major countries all over the world. And that's a hard thing to do, but that is exactly what has to be done. So in my view, what we have to do is have the United States lead the world in transforming our energy system away from fossil fuel. That means into energy efficiency, older buildings in Vermont and around the country waste an enormous amount of electricity. So if you had better insulation, better roofing, better windows, you could save a lot of energy, and then we have to create energy through wind, solar, and other forms of sustainable uh, energy. Okay. All right, other questions for me? Uh, okay, yellow hat, yeah. Not much. Not one of my issues. She lived a long time. She lived her life. Uh, and I got one or two other things on my mind other than that. Yeah. I have ambivalent feelings about nuclear energy. Uh, the problem with nuclear energy is we don't quite know where to get rid of the waste right now. So if you go down to Wyndham County, you go down to Brattleboro, there is a, in Vernon, there's an old nuclear power plant the waste is right now on the Connecticut River. Not a good place for it to be. But there are people who are trying to figure out a way as to how they can deal with waste and create less waste. Uh, other questions on any subject? Yeah. How do you propose to go about creating communities as community breakers become more violent? Okay. Well, I mean, uh, uh, okay, what about unions? Unions are good things, stand up. You got a mic? Union, uh, unions are a good thing. They protect the rights of the workers. Okay, let's talk about that. Question, are unions a good thing? Raise your hand if you think they are. Okay, raise your hand if you think they're not. Raise your hand if you don't know what a union is. Okay. Who wants to help me define what a union is? You want to do that? A union is a group of workers who help other workers, whether or not they're part of that union, uh, they help them protect their rights as workers, such as like their working hours. Good. If they need overtime, then Good. the unions uh, allow them to work that overtime. Okay, like who that. else has views on unions? Any of your parents members of the union? Yep. Yep. Raise your hand. Okay. Stand up. Good. Stand up. Too bad you got the mic down. You don't have to talk. All right. Does your mother think it's important to be a member of the union? Yes, she does. Why? Because um, she works for the post office. And she works where? She works for the post office. Yes. And a lot of postal workers are being overworked right now. Yes. So being a part of the union can guarantee right. her rights for reasonable hours and reasonable wages. Very good. All right, look, what a union is, is not complicated. If you are working, let's say, for the U.S. Postal Service, you're a teacher, you're working for Amazon, you're working for General Motors, you're working for Ford, whatever it is, and you are one worker, and I'm the boss, you come in and you say, you know, I want decent wages, and I say, well, this is what I'm giving you, take it or leave it. You don't like it, you can leave it. You have no power. But if you are all together, you say, we want a contract which is going to tell us how much money we want to earn, how much money we need. And you negotiate that contract. And you negotiate working conditions. And you negotiate benefits, whether you're going to have good health care or not. Unions play a very, very, very important role in protecting the middle class of this country. Employers like Amazon or Starbucks don't like unions because the billionaires who own those companies are going to have to pay out more money to their workers. So they try to make it hard for workers to join unions. It's always been a struggle. It's a struggle right now. It's an issue we are working very hard on. Okay, other questions? Let me get some more hands here. Anyone on? All right, blue sweatshirt. Yeah. What are your, what are your thoughts on the federal minimum wage? Okay, well you're talking to somebody who introduced the legislation on minimum wage. Uh, 
A couple of years ago, we brought a bill to the floor of the Senate, and it's a bill that passed the House that would raise the minimum wage nationally to $15 an hour. All right, I'm not sure that that's high, as high as it should be right now. Why is it important that we have a decent minimum wage in this country? Who has thoughts on that? All right. Young man, blue sweatshirt, why is it important that we have a minimum wage? It's important to have a minimum wage because we don't want people starving Good. just because of the job. Right. You've got people all over this country. Right now, the federal minimum wage, if you can believe it. Anyone know what it is? Who knows what it is? It is exactly $7.25 an hour. You think anybody in America can live on seven and a quarter an hour? No. And many states, including Vermont, have raised the minimum wage. What we don't have is a federal minimum wage that says that every worker in America should earn at least a certain amount of money. That is a major struggle. And as a matter of fact, I'm helping to lead that effort against a lot of opposition to raise the minimum wage to at least $15 an hour. All right, I want to talk, touch on another issue I want you to think about, and that is uh, higher education. How many of you are thinking about going to college or tech school beyond high school? Raise your hand. All right. And what about the cost of higher education? Is that an issue that you guys think about, your families think about? All right, who wants to tell me about higher education, the cost of it, etc. cetera? What's the thoughts on that? We're going to hands here. Is this, is this a hand? You want to comment on that? Okay, that's fine. All right, higher education, cost of higher education. What do we do? Is it a problem? All right, so who wants to tell me what the problem is? All uh, right, yeah. I'm a teacher and I'm 50 years old, so that means I've been on my students for a very long time, and I still owe $26,000, right? So it shows you that to, 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 it makes you go to school and make you just heard your teacher who revealed her age to the world. She doesn't look it. A young looking 50 uh, who has been paying off her debt since she graduated college and still owes $26,000 because you got to pay interest. What's your interest rate on it? providers, we need more doctors, we need more nurses, we need more dentists, we need more psychologists, we need more engineers, you name it. What does it mean that when somebody graduates college, they can be 30, 40, 50,000 in debt, you go to graduate school? I have talked to doctors and dentists who have graduated dental school or medical school $400,000 in debt. Does that make sense? What do you think about higher education? What should we do? Uh, let me ask you this question. So I, I want you to think about it. When you walked into BFA this morning, how much did it cost you to come in here? Nothing. Who pays for the lights? Who pays your teacher's salary? Who heats the building? Taxpayers. In the case of education, it is often the local property tax that your parents will moan and groan about. It is state tax, it is federal money coming in. But a decision was made probably a hundred years ago that we should have free public education. 
a hundred years ago in St. Albans. Do you think kids your age were in high school? You think so? What were they doing a hundred years ago? 120 years ago? What were they doing? Raise your hand. Yeah, stand up. They were working on farms, maybe in factories, mostly farms in this state. And a decision was made all over the country in different ways that all kids, regardless of their income, should have the right to get an education. Whether you're poor, whether you're rich, you should get an education from kindergarten through 12th grade, which is where you are right now in high school. The world has changed very significantly in the last hundred years. I believe that we should make public colleges and universities tuition free. All right, does that make sense to people? All right, how are you going to pay for this? You're going to have higher taxes on wealthy people. All right, I think we are running, are we running out of time? Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well listen, thank you guys very, very much. You were great. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Students in the BFA Mercury, the journalists may stay. Journalists in BFA Mercury may stay.